Hi Grade 12s, so what we're going to be doing is finishing off our section on graph interpretation um, and then practicing some graph interpretation questions in this first lesson. So if you have a look at example 5 that we have on our worksheet from class, example 5 said the graph below represents the derivative of f. Now this is going to be something we need to practice quite a lot because it's probably the more challenging part of calculus graphs. So this, the thing to remember here is that this parabola represents the y values are actually the gradient of a cubic function. So y values are the gradient of f. Now how do I know that f will be cubic? Well this is a parabola and a parabola will be the first derivative of a cubic because when you bring down your exponent you subtract 1. So if I have a look at this, these y values are all positive y values. So these are all, if I look across, these are all positive y values. Now what does that mean in terms of the cubic? This means where the gradient of the cubic is positive. So this is where f dashed x is greater than 0, so my gradient is positive. So if I'm thinking of my cubic, my cubic must be going up. Because I don't know if the cubic's below the x-axis or above the x-axis, but I know it's going up. Then what happens is at this point, your parabola equals 0. Now don't forget your parabola represents f dashed. So my y values are 0 on this parabola, but your parabola represents gradient. So my y values are 0, which means I must have a stationary point. Now I'm making a turn. I'm not entirely sure if it turns yet. But if you look here, these y values, all the way along here, these y values are all negative all the way up to here, all these y values are negative. Now don't forget what these y values represent, they represent the gradient. So my gradient is now negative, so I actually do know that it turns and it, and it continues downwards as a cubic because my gradient is now negative. Now that continues until 2 where my gradient is now 0 again because my y value is 0, so my gradient is 0 and after that these y values, sorry, let me change color, those y values are now positive again. So these y values represent gradient. So my gradient is now positive, which means I must be turning and going up. So just from keeping in mind all the time that the y values on this parabola tell you about the gradient of the cubic. So ask yourself what are the y values here because that's what tell me what the sign of my gradient is. So I've immediately you know kind of drawn a rough estimate of my cubic. This value of the stationary point will be at negative 4 and the value of that stationary point will be at 2 and I just so happen to know that my point of inflection where your concavity changes is slap bang in the middle. So negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2 and so s divide that by 2 and you'll get negative 1. Slap bang in the middle would be my point of inflection. Now that will be over there. The reason why it's in the middle is because at the middle of your two x-intercepts of your parabola, which is where your y values are 0, but your y values represent gradient. So where your gradients of the cubic are 0, the middle of those two will be where the gradient of f dashed is 0. So this will be the gradient of f dashed, because this is a stationary point, will be 0. The gradient of f dashed. Now the gradient of f dashed is f dash dashed. Now that would be a point of inflection in this case. So, I mean, you can always just remember that the x-intercepts of the derivative will be your stationary points, and the turning point of your parabola will be your point of inflection, but it's far better to rather understand what you're doing. So I've kind of really answered most of these questions because it says, first question, it says, write down the values for x of the stationary points of the cubic. Well, the one is that x is equal to negative 4, and the other one is that x is equal to 2. Now it says, sorry, not, I'm just going to write positive 2. Um, I haven't classified them, but I can see from my picture that this is a local maximum, 
and the other one is your local minimum. Now, because they say explain, don't think that explain always has to be long words. You could actually just draw a picture here and say this is my cubic. The only problem is then you're kind of saying, look, I've drawn a local maximum, that's why it's a local maximum. So here, I would argue that words would be better. Now, the words that I would argue with here is these y values are positive before negative 4 and then negative after negative 4 which means that my gradient is positive for those values less than negative 4 and my gradient is negative for x is greater than negative 4 so you must be having a positive gradient and then a negative gradient and for the next one I'd argue the exact opposite I would say well my gradient is negative for x is less than 2 and my gradient is positive for x is greater than 2 and personally that would be a perfectly good explanation for me right on to the next one for what values of x is f concave down now what's lovely is because they didn't ask for an explanation I could just look at my graph that I have drawn and I can see that concave down is that part so my answer is x is less than minus 1 what you could do is also you could think about what concave down means concave down means your second derivative is negative now you've drawn a graph of the first derivative so the second derivative is the gradient of this parabola so basically you're asking me where the gradient of my parabola is negative and I can see where that is this parabola is going down all the way to its turning point which is at negative 1 so there's multiple ways how you can know that this answer is x is less than minus 1 and they didn't say explain so you sketching your cubic you could read the, gra the answer straight off there for what values of x is f increasing well again I could look at the cubic that I drew where is the cubic going up well it's going up before the first turning point and after the second turning point now I could have also just looked at when it's increasing you want f dashed x to be positive you want your gradient to be positive so I could actually just solve this from a inequality point of view and look at my parabola and if I just pick a nice bright color that is where my parabola would be equal to zero so above zero would be there and there which is exactly the same as what our cubic would be producing for us so I would argue that my x's have to be less than minus 4 or my x's have to be greater than 2 and again no explanation needed so you can come to that decision however you want now to sketch a possible um, graph of f now the reason why they say possible is that you have no idea where this crosses the axis so basically that's all they want from you and what they would want from you is to know that this happens at negative 4 this happens at 2 and my point of inflection is at negative 1 so I haven't even drawn a y-axis or an x-axis because I don't actually know where this graph fits on those axes I go on to the next one um, the next one says a cubic function has the following properties f of a half equals f of 3 f of is equal to f of negative 1 equals 0 so basically the y values are 0 now when are your y values 0 that would imply that those are x-intercepts so immediately I have no idea where the y-axis would be in this but I know that at negative 1 at a half and at 3 I would have x-intercepts so there we go now the question then say, carries on to say that f dashed of 2 and f dashed of 3rd equals 0 so this is where f dashed is 0 so these are stationary points so f dashed of 2 2 is roughly about there and a third is roughly about there and those will be turning points now again I don't know you know is that below below or above the axis I'm not really sure and then it says f decreases for x is less than minus sorry for x is between minus a third and two so from this value to that value the graph has to be decreasing so 
I kind of now can figure out that my graph must be going up through the axis there and maximizing there so that it can go down here and minimize there and then go up. Now notice I haven't drawn any y-axis because I don't really know where the y-axis um, I suppose I know where it is, it's somewhere around here if I drew it in it would be somewhere around there but I don't really know if the graph where the graph goes through the y-axis and I don't know where the turning points are but I do know that this has to be a local maximum and I know that this has to be a local minimum simply because the graph goes down between those two points so that would be a possible value I mean a possible graph of f. Now that kind of ends our section on graph interpretation and so what you need to now do from the textbook is exercise 9.3 on page 224 and I've listed five of the most applicable questions for us there. Um, the answers are in the back of the textbook so do mark them and then let me know any questions that you have. Okay, thanks girls.